What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we are starting our second portfolio project in Tableau. Now, in the very first project, we focused on SQL. So we imported a COVID data set. And then we looked at that and just wrote a lot of queries. And if you haven't done that one yet, uh, that kind of leads into this video now. And so you might want to do that one first. And so I'll leave a link in the description if you want to do that. This project is all about creating visualizations in Tableau. So we're going to create multiple visualizations. We'll combine all of those to create our dashboard, and then we can share that dashboard. And you can put that on your resume, in your portfolio, or on your LinkedIn. I want to mention once again, I tried to make this as beginner friendly as I possibly could. So if you have no experience with Tableau at all, you should still be able to do this portfolio project and add it to your portfolio. Without further ado, let's jump over to my screen and get started on the project. So let's start the project. And the very first thing that we need to do is download Tableau public. All you have to do is go to the link that I will leave in the description below. All you have to do is go in here, put in your email, click download the app. Um, of course, I've already downloaded it um, and I checked multiple times and it works. Then you just go through the process to actually create an account. Um, and once you have that account, then you can start building your visualizations. Now, you also get an online um, account. This is my Alex the Analyst account. This is the visualization that we're going to be working on. Um, and just to give you a really quick um, look at it, this is it. Uh, this is what we're going to be working on. Um, it's nothing crazy, nothing too hard. Anybody should be able to do this. This is supposed to be a uh, more of a roadmap to how to get started, how to create your first dashboard, whether it is very simple like mine, uh, which I would consider this pretty simple. Um, one that I think we can do in under an hour and a half. Um, whereas I tried earlier to do one and I recorded for about three hours and um, it was what I would consider much, I, I don't want to say better, but it was just more advanced, a lot more colors, more different things but it just took forever. I didn't think it was very um, helpful for a lot of people. I thought it was a little bit too complex. So I trimmed it down, got down to the nitty gritty, and this is what we're going to be working with. Um, so I'm really excited about it because I think this is actually a lot better than the longer version. So um, you'll have this account, and once you download everything, um, you'll be able to kind of search like I'm searching right now, search for Tableau. A Tableau desktop is going to come up, and you will now be able to insert it. Now, um, you know, we worked on all these things in SQL and we created the views. We did all this work. Um, Tableau public, you can't connect to a database. You can't connect to SQL server. Um, and that's kind of a bummer because it'd be super great to be able to do that. And in a work environment, that's what you would do. You know, it, ideally that's what you do. Sometimes you download it for Excel for different reasons. Um, but we can't do that. We're going to use, be using Excel for this. So what I've done is I've created these queries used for Tableau project. Um, and I'm, I've already saved this query. I'm going to put it in the uh, description so you have it. Um, I tweaked, again, I went through and I tweaked some of the scripts that we worked through. Um, it's very similar. If you notice, it's very, very similar uh, to what we worked on in the first project. I tweaked them. These are the first four. <clears throat> these are the only four visualizations we're going to be doing. Nothing crazy, I promise you. Originally, and I kept the original queries in here in case you were curious and wanted to look at them and try to use them. I had these and there were seven of them. Um, and again, it, it just took a really long time to get through the video. I felt like it was just too much, to be fair. So I, I genuinely do believe that trimming it down was the best decision and it's going to be better for you. It's going to be better for me. Um, and we will go from there. So all we're going to do is we're going to run this. Let's execute it. And we're going to hit up in this top left. And what we're going to do is control shift C. And what that does is it copies the data as well as the headers. And that's um, that's something we need. So um, really quick, let me get out of these. This is from a previous uh, attempt. Um, let's go to Excel. And we are going to insert this. And we're going to save it. So we're going to do File. Save as, and I'm just going to go to my downloads and I'm going to say, um, let's do Tableau table one and replace for me because I already did that one. Let's go back. Um, 
And I have I put some notes in there. You can read through it. This is just to double check that the numbers are right and why it's correct um, and why we're using it. This is number two. So let's copy. Um, again, upper right, Control Shift C is going to copy everything with the headers, and that is what we want. Um, again, I know this is tedious. It's not really that tedious. Um, I hope this isn't crazy tedious, but it is very manual. Normally, you wouldn't have to do this, uh, but we do, and that's okay. I think um, do tablet table two. I think this is a good learning experience, a good bonding experience for all of us. Um, if you do this with me, then we, we that means we've seen stuff together, man and gals. Um, so this one, Control Shift C, this is going to be our tablet table three. All right. Oops, oops, oops. What am I doing? I need a new one. Um, so something you need to look out for and something that we didn't have to look out from the previous two is nulls. Now, when you insert or, or upload data or import data into Tableau, Tableau is going to do the best job that it can to assign a um, data type to that column. And if you have nulls in any of your columns, it could mistake that for a string or it most likely will. Um, if you look, I already have this um, sorted by highest to lowest. And if we go down to the very bottom, there are these nulls here. We don't want the nulls. We want those to be zeros um, because then it will be numeric and it'll assign it a numeric uh, data type. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do control H and that's just habit. Um, I almost always do that. So we're going to do null and that just assigns it to not just one sheet, but if there's multiple sheets with nulls in it, um, we'll do that. We'll null, we'll go to zero, replace all, and we should be good to go. This should fix uh, any issue that we might occur or, or have in the future. And I promise you, somebody's going to skip this part of the video and they're going to have this issue and they're going to come back. And they're going to be watching this, wishing they just watched this in the first place. Um, so stick around because we have to do this in the next one as well. Um, so we'll do file, we'll do save as, download. So do Tableau table three. Now you may be wondering, Alex, why aren't we just saving this in one Excel? with different sheets. Why aren't we doing that? Well, that's great. Really a fantastic question, to be honest. The reason for that is if we include all of these in, I'm just going to keep going while we're talking. If you include, include all of these in just one Excel, they have to all be able to tie together. Um, and as you can may, may be able to tell now, they don't. Um, and that's because, you know, it's like a join. You have to be able to join it on like a date or the continent, or the location, or multiple of those things. And if you notice, we can't do that with these. Um, and so we have to separate them out. Now, we also need to change the date in this one. So let's do short date. I just have to go right up um, into this drop down after clicking on the C. And there are nulls in this one as well. Um, let me see if we'll find any. Yeah, there's nulls here as well. So we need to do the exact same thing. So nulls to zero, replace all. And there was 5,000 done. Um, let me make sure because I thought there were more than that. Um, but let's see. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, that's great. No, that's fantastic. Okay. So we're good to go. We have, uh, once we save this, we have our four. Uh, I can't talk at the same time. I can't talk and type. Tableau table four, we have all of them ready to go. We have all of them set up. Now we need to actually get them into Tableau and then we need to start building our visualizations. So pull up Tableau with me, uh, click Microsoft Excel and we're gonna go to table one and we're gonna open. And this is exactly what we had before. This is our table one. Now we don't wanna uh, add connections to this. What we want to do is let's go down to this. It says it's prompting us to go to the worksheet. So now we have access to this table that we just imported or this Excel sheet that we just imported. What you want to do is you can you can do it here. Um, I'm for sake of what we're doing. I'm just going to go to sheet two. Go to um, this this one right here. It says uh, new data source. Go to Microsoft Excel and we're just going to do this for all of them. So we're going to do um, we're going to import it. We're going to go over here. Now we have our table two in here. Again, 
just doing this, you don't have to do it exactly how I'm doing it. There's a faster way, but for visual purposes, uh, I'm gonna do it like that. Um, all right, and then four, we're gonna add it. And now that we have them all opened up, what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna cut myself off the screen because you know you don't need to see me anymore. And I'm gonna, I'm honestly, I'm gonna get in the way because um, we're actually gonna start building our visualizations. I want you to be able to see everything, be able to track everything. I don't wanna be in the way in this upper corner wherever I am. Um, so thank you for sticking with me. I'm gonna get out of here so you can just hear my voice and we will continue on from here. All right, so you should still be hearing my voice. I am still here, but uh, we are gonna get started. Now, the very first one we're going to do is by far the simplest. Um, it's extremely simple. Um, let me show you. We're going to be looking. We're going to be doing this one right here. OK, so the uh, these global numbers with just these colors and, and the columns and rows. So very simple. Let's go back over here. So what we need for this is the total cases, total deaths and the average death percentage. So we have those over here. Uh, oh, let's go over to table one because we were just on table four because we just imported that one. So we have total cases. Um, we'll make that a column. Uh, total deaths and death percentage. Now, of course, this is not how we want it visualized at all. Um, what we want to do is go over to the show me and then go right back up here for these text tables. So if you, oh, let me click on it. So right down here, oh gosh, come on. It says text tables down there at the very bottom of this box down there. It says for text tables, try one dimension, one measure. So um, that is what we have now. And we want to move these measures right up here into the columns. Um, and let's rearrange these really quick. Not oh, perfect. That's exactly how I wanted it. So now we have the total cases, total deaths, and death percentage. Um, let's expand this just a little bit so we can see each one. Perfect. Um, there's a few things that we need to, we need to change in here um, to make it just more user friendly, make it look better. Um, and once we actually put this into the dashboard at the end, we'll probably have to come back here and change a few things anyways, but it'll give us a pretty good start. Uh, so the very first thing that we want to do is just change the coloring, change some of the formatting uh, and, and make it look a little nicer. And then we'll do a little bit after that. So, you know, you can, do, if you see over here on these marks, there's color, size, text, detail, tooltip. Um, that's referring to these numbers right here or, or what is in these rows. So if we go over here to color and we, you know, make them orange or green, we can do that. I like them black. I think it's going to stand out when we put the color behind it. I personally like that look. Um, you can also change the size um, and make it as large as you want. I actually do want the size to be a little bit larger anyways. So let's do that right now. Doesn't hurt. Um, and let's pull this down a little bit. Um, so if we go up here to format uh, and let's do shading, this is going to where we can get some of these colors. Uh, let's go over to columns and our header. I believe that's what these are, are our headers. Um, let's go over to this color. That's perfect. Uh, let's just keep it like that. I think um, that's easy enough. And Let's see. Let's see if this is referring to our. Um, maybe it's not. I was trying to change these really quick, but I'm forgetting where those are. Uh, not super important. Um, we can always do that later. But we also want to change the shading um, on these as well. Now, if you go over here and you go to the worksheet and you change that, it's going to change the entire thing. That looks absolutely terrible. I do not recommend that. But if you go to the pane, the pane is what's referring to um, this uh, with the rows in it. So we can do this. I like it a little bit lighter, maybe like that. I think that doesn't look bad at all. Um, so there's a lot that you can customize in here. Um, you can even do grid lines, trend lines. Um, let me see. Maybe we want to do something like this. I mean, I, I personally like... Um, doing some sort of lines to like separate these out, but we don't have to, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do it a little bit. Um, no, not try line, grid lines. Yeah, something like this. So mm, let me do a little smaller, just like that. 
super simple, separates it, um, makes it look nice. We'll probably come back and change this at some point. But then this is a really good, this looks very similar to what I did originally. And I think this will be good to go for now. Um, let's keep going. Let's go on to our second sheet. Hey, future Alex here. I realized that I forgot to show you something and I did not want to leave it out. I wanted to make sure that you knew how to do this. So I'm coming back in time. Um, we have already completed the entire dashboard, but we're going to pretend that we have not and we are still on sheet one. What we're going to be looking at is this death percentage right here. It says two as in 2%, but it's rounding to the nearest whole number. And for death percentage, we want to be a little bit more accurate than 2%, maybe 2.1103 or whatever that number is. We want to be a little bit better. Um, and so I think we want to go to the two decimal points uh, or the, or the you know, 2.11, uh, which is what the number will be. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is how not to do it. Um, and this is probably something that a lot of people will do. I know I did. You'll go right here and you'll right click and you'll go to format. Um, and, you know, this is not where you need to be looking, although you can look through here and figure that out yourself if you want to. The actual place where you need to look is right here in this measure values. So let's go over here. Let's click the drop down. We'll go to format. And under the default pane, there's this numbers. And if we click on it, we can go to number custom and change the decimal place. So as you can see right now, it's affecting every single column and we don't want that. And it's very easy to just specify what column you do want. So we're going to go up here to fields, click the drop down and go to some death percentage. And now the only option we have is just numbers. So that makes it really easy. We're going to click here, go to number custom, and then it automatically goes to two, but you can go as you know, specific as you'd like. I'm going to keep it at two for, um, at the end of the video, you're going to see that it says two uh, on mine because I'm going back the next day and, and showing you this. But I hope that yours says 2.11 or as specific as you'd like to be so that you have that. So I hope now yours will be better than mine at the very end. I hope that this was helpful and well, let's continue with the video. So sheet two and let's get rid of this format lines. Let's go to table two. So what we are doing in this one is we're going to be creating, and I'll go back here to show you, we're going to be creating this graph right here. Okay, that's great. Give it a second. Um, we're going to be creating that bar graph that you just saw. Um, and I'm not going to wait for it. It's If you look right here, this small bar graph, um, that's what, that, this one right here. That's what we're going to be making right now. This one should, I believe, be the second simplest. I, I kind of did them in order of simplicity. Um, so let's go over here. We need our location. You can either drop it down here as a column or drop it in here as a column. Either one works. Um, uh, so it's Africa, Asia, Europe, North America, Oceania, South America. Let's try to expand this a little bit. Okay, that was way too far. Let's do like that. Perfect. Um, so we have our locations and what this one is going to be actually looking at is total death count. So the current global death count. So we want to do this by rows. And it's already looking super close to what we wanted or what we had in the, um, the previous thing. So super, super close already. Um, and you can do other things if you want to, you know, you want to mess up your visualization with a pie chart, go for it um, or do what I just did, you know, go for it. Uh, but I, I like the simple look of, of the pie chart. You can, uh, I'll show you how to kind of change the colors in a little bit if you want to do that. Uh, you don't have to, but you absolutely can. Um, so something that I want to do that I personally like doing is going is, is ordering them by highest to lowest. I like that descending look. So. Let's go up here and let's go to sort. And I want to do it manually. So let's, let's see which one's the biggest. So Europe should be at the top. Then North America. And then Asia. And then South America. Oops, South America is before Asia. There we go. Let's exit out of that. So 
We could keep it exactly how it is and it would be fine, but we want to make some additional changes to it. Um, I want to rename this location to continent. Um, bu -bu 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 -um. That's not right. I think it's right here. That's it. So let's do let's do um, continent. Is that how you spell continent? Yeah, that's how you spell continent. Perfect. And then it changes up here. Um, super easy. Um, and if we do go, if we do this right here, and we oops, we change this to color, then we can change the colors. These are our marks, and we can change certain things about them. So the size, right? If we want to change the size, we can do that. Um, I like to keep it pretty moderate, just a normal. I don't. I, I'm not. <laughs> I don't want to get too crazy over here. All right. I'm just trying to trying to help. So if we do the color, you can do lots of different colors. Um, and, and you can, uh, you know, you can do it in like a descending order. Uh, that didn't work at all. Orange, sign palette, apply. There we go. You can do it in descending order if you want. That looks totally fine. Um, you, there, you can keep a theme in your Tableau dashboard, which will be something that I probably talk about in, in my tutorials. Um, speaking of... Uh, something I have not mentioned, and I'm just going to take a super quick break, like 30 seconds. Something I have not mentioned is if you have never done a Tableau project before, a lot of this might be very confusing, and I hope I'm not going through it too fast. I'm coming into this with hopefully the, I'm, I'm, I hope I'm explaining it and going through it slow enough. I am going to be doing a complete Tableau series coming up very soon. Like within the next two months, I'm starting it. Um, and so I'm going to have a complete tutorial on a lot of the basics, a lot of the things that we're looking at right now, as well as some, a few more advanced things. So, you know, I, I, I did that backwards. I, you know, I could have done the tutorial first, but I really think these projects are um, important to do. So I got them out first. But if you're having trouble with these, look forward to those in the future um, and just try to keep up with these. You'll learn a lot just by going through these and doing what we're doing anyways. So let's get back to the project. I don't want to harp on that too much, but um, the colors you can do a lot with if you want to. I I personally just want to keep it how it was. So I'm just doing Control Z. I'm just going to keep it like this. Not getting any, not doing anything too crazy. Not doing anything fancy. Um, but please play around with it. Do what you think looks nice. Again, I am trying to keep it as simple as possible. as to not confuse anybody. Um, so we have this. There's a few other things that you may consider doing uh speaking of something like like this you can edit this axis now as of right now it's doing tick marks or, or i think i'm going to call them tick marks yeah they are called tick marks of 100,000. okay you don't have to have it like this um you can change it and customize it however you want so you know if we want to make it let me see if that's right yeah if we want to make it like this where it goes up a little higher that's totally fine. Um, and if these tick marks, they're auto automatic, um, they're doing tick marks of, whoops, of a you know, that's just a million. So that's what it's gonna look like with a million over here. Um, and we can also get rid of one. And then it's gonna be the exact thing that we just did, or we can get rid of another one. And it's gonna look like that, or we can get rid of another one. And it's just gonna, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna look how you make it look, okay? I'm just gonna keep it with the automatic again, um, not because it, I'm lazy, but because I think it's just uh, a little bit easier. If you want to change this total death count, uh, you definitely can. Uh, I, I personally, we can keep it like that. I might even change it to death count later on, but I think this looks nice. It's in order. It's simple. Um, and, and visualizations should not, should not be crazy hard to read. So that is the end of our second visualization. We're going to move on to our third one, and arguably my favorite, which is the map. Um, so let's go to number three. Let's go to table three, uh, and let's go look really quick at what this looks like, just kind of like this. Um, and I, I, I think how we have it or are going to do it is going to be even better. So... <clears throat> What we have is we have the location, um, and in the location, as you can see, these are all countries. Now, it's not gonna open up these map options in the show me. It's not gonna open up the, those map options because 
Um, that's not how the map options work. As of now, it's just looking at as a text. But we want to tell it and say, hey, this is not just a location. This is, this is part of a geography. This is something that you should be looking at um, differently. So we can change this and we go, we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna click on this little drop down. We're gonna go down right here to geographic role and we're gonna go down to country region. And let's click on that. And as you can see down here, they just generated some longitude and latitude. So what we need to do for that is stick them right up here. So there's our longitude, here's our latitude. Excuse me for a second. I just sneezed. Uh, it is allergy season for me. My goodness, it is not pretty over here. Uh, so we have the longitude and latitude. Um, and as you can see, it opened up that map for us. That is fantastic. And now what we need to do is we need to start adding things in. Now, it's not um, automatically um, it, really quick. If you want to do the pan, you want to be able to like reposition it. That's what I want to do. Reposition it about right here. Uh, you just click on this arrow, click pan. Uh, this is how you like select multiple. I don't really need that. So I keep it on the pan for the most part. Anyways, now this is where we need to um, insert like what is going to be looked at and then what is going to be, um, what colors, how are we going to assign colors to these countries? Okay. So the first thing I want to add over here is the location. So that it can now look and, and assign something to each location. And I want to make, um, I'm going to keep that the same really quick because I want to add in what we're actually going to be looking at, which is our percent population infected. Now, why do I not want to add it over here? It's because it ruins everything. Um, that's why. I want to add it right down here. And that's fantastic. And I want to actually make this a color. Oh, now that already much clearer. How do I say this? It resembles it a lot more closely. Um, so, you know, this is a lot more along the lines of what we were hoping for. So this is looking really, really good. So um, there's a few things that I, you know, want to mention or talk about before we actually start moving into this. One, Tableau has their own whole section called Map Up Here. Um, and there's a lot of things that you can do with it. We're not going to be looking at everything today, but one thing I do want to look at is just these background maps. Um, it, whoops, it adds a little bit of depth, a little bit of, um, and it can change the moods. Like this is a nighttime one. So if you have like nighttime data, where you are looking at, I don't know, the stars, sun's rotation. I have no idea. Um, you can do that. Um, the one we're going to be doing is this outdoors one, and it's just going to show the ocean. And if you noticed, the United States and like all the actual country names got a lot brighter. Um, something that, you know, you can do is add something like a label. And before that would have made sense. Because um, if we have it like this, where it's light, you can't really see the United States behind there. But you may have a label on there uh, and the label helps. But I don't like this label per se. You can always change it and go in and make it better. I don't necessarily like how they have those labels. So I'm going to use the outdoors and I'm going to get rid of this. So I'm just going to go to detail. I like how this looks a lot more. It just suits what I personally prefer. But if you don't like that as much, um, go over here, go to label, and then adjust that label to how you like it. I think that is perfectly acceptable. Um, now, these colors aren't to my taste. As you can see over here, we have this, um, this legend. And we'll get to that in a second. But I personally like a little bit different colors, and we can change that by going whoops, by going to color, clicking on that, and going edit colors. So um, I don't know why I pulled it over there. Let me pull it back. It doesn't make sense. I personally like reds, oranges um, for these kind of things, at least the infection rates, because I feel like it, I don't know, it's kind of a scary thing. So I want to make it uh, that way. And so you can do something like this. Uh, I think that looks very nice. We may even keep it like that. But just for sake of um, what we're doing, you can do something like this. Uh, and it, again, it's a personal taste. Okay, so if you don't like this one, don't use it. I, I, I don't want you to use it. I want you to find one that, that really looks good to you. Um, and just know that 
any one that you choose, you'll still have this right over here. Okay, so you should be all right. So let's, do, let's try this red to gold. I think this is kind of what we're going for. Um, and to me, right off the bat, just starting out, looks like we're doing pretty good. Um, let's go over here really quick. Let's go to this legend and drop this down. So there's a few things you can do over here. Um, but one thing I want to do is just edit this title. I don't want it to say the sum because <clears throat> each um, country has its own row in our Excel. So it's not actually the sum, it's just its row. But, you know, uh, I don't want people thinking this is some type of aggregate function. I just want people to know this is the percent of the population infected. And speaking of, uh, we should edit this to do, let's see, let's do percent population infected per country. I don't know if that's what we had it in the last one, but that's what we're naming it in this one. Um, all right, I think, <clears throat> I think this one looks good. I mean, we could do more with this um, in terms of labeling and um, colors and, and different stuff, um, but we don't need to. We, we do not need to do that. One thing I will note, um, again, just to make this more of a memorable or teachable moment, you don't only have to have one thing in these marks. If I wanted to add a location down here, I can, and I can change it um, and, and make it. I didn't want to do that. That looks terrible. But you can do multiple things. So I can have a label here, and and I can do you know the color down here. I can do multiple things with it. So. Just know that if you want multiple, if you, oh, hey, I want to have a color on the location, I also want to have a label on the location, you can do that. Um, you just have to add multiple things in that, in that marks. Uh, teachable moments, just trying to, just trying to keep it, just trying, to keep, trying to keep the learning alive. Um, let's go on to the next one. Let's go to sheet four and go to table four. Now, this one, we're going to be doing some uh, time series. We have some time series data here. And for this, um, we're going to be selecting a few specific countries. You can select whichever countries you want. Um, but I have a few that I'll, I'll show you in a little bit that, you know, I think are just not the most relevant, but are really interesting. Um, so what we need to do is we need to bring over the date. And we want that to be on our um, a column because we want it to show the progression over time. Uh, the thing that we're going to be looking at is actually the percent of the population infected. So let's bring that down right here. Um, and look, it already tried its best to create something. Um, and, and it really did. It tried its best. Um, let's. Uh, why do I keep scooting it just a little bit? I want to scoot it the whole way. <clears throat> it tried its best. It really did. Um, but let's pull. Let's drop this down really quick. There's a few different things that we want to look at first off is like just this the dates because right now it literally is just 2020 and 2021 and that's not exactly what we want um but let's let's do this really quick let's put month um it's breaking out by month um and now i'm regretting making it larger um if you notice it doesn't have 2020 or 2021 in here at all um it just has january february march april May, June, July. So it's breaking it out per month. Um, let me go back to make it small again. It's breaking it out per month, and that's not what we want, um, and we don't quarter it either. We want to have it by year. We, we do want it separated by year because we want the distinction between 2020 and 2021 because those, those are not the same. There's, con there's a continual time period from year to year. So what we're going to do is go down here, and this is where we can adjust. Now, just for the sake of things, I'm going to show day. And it gets very specific. Um, and you can do it this way. Um, and so on each day, um, you can do the percent population effect. And as you can see, it's going higher and higher and higher. That's not, that won't be that way um, in just a little bit. That's summing the percent um, of all the countries. So, you know, we have it like this. Um, you can also, whoops. We can also do month, and this is kind of what I prefer. It's just simpler to do it, it simpler look. So look at it like this. So, it, you know, just the way it has it, and then look at it like this. Um, it's just what I would consider a little bit 
easier, okay? So you don't have to do it like that. Um, do it however you would like. Um, whoops, that is not what I was trying to click. So we wanna break this out by each individual um, country, okay? We don't want the sum. That's not uh, what, what we want. So let's go down, or down here and let's say average. Um, that's not what we want either. Why did I do that? Um, we want to break this out by the location, right? We want to break this out by country. Completely ignore the last like two things I just did. We want to break it out by location. Um, and as of right now, this is a, this is a hot mess. Um, they're all in there. Let's look at this one, Andorra. They're all in there, but they look horrible. Um, I mean, that's that's not what you want. Um, so, you know, let's we can easily break this out. Oops, by color, and it's starting to look a lot better. And look, now we have this legend that shows us which color is what. So, I mean, we're already just killing it. Um, this looks ten times better than it did just a minute ago. It's still looks terrible um and <clears throat> we can limit this to specific locations um i think it's right up here let me see is it sort i don't know if it's sort um let me see let me see if it's location maybe it's filter here we go so if we go back, i'm going to restart in case you didn't see that so i'm just going to go to location i'm going to do the drop down i'm going to go to filter and what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a few specific countries. So I'm going to go to none. Um, I want to do the United States as well as the United Kingdom. Um, let's do Mexico. We'll do India. We'll do China. And where else should we do? Um, any other any other places? No, I think that should be fine. Let's just keep it there. And we'll apply that and we'll click OK. So as you can see, um, it's still summing it. Let's go. Let's not go to sum. Let's just go to. Uh, I mean, it, it's not wrong. It's just. <coughs> excuse me. It's just doing the max. I mean, let's see what the difference is between max and the average. It's nothing uh, or hardly anything. You know what, for simplicity's sake, I don't want to get into um, all that stuff. We're just going to keep it with average. Um, so it's going to, over that month, what is in that month, what's the average in that month? If you do the maximum, it's breaking it up by month. So what's the max in that month? Again, I'm not going to go into all that, why we want to do it. Let's just stick with average. It's the, I think it makes the most sense. It's simplest. So what we have right now is it starts off at, literally the January where almost no countries had any infection rates and it slowly progresses. And as you can see, the United States were just unfortunately doing well um, in this category. And as of April of 2021, um, you know, we have a 9.5. This is, by the way, this is that exact same data we used two weeks ago for the first portfolio project. If you want this to be current and upgraded, you're just going to have to get the new data and then and, and um, update that in your tables to get the most recent data for May. Um, so we have this and it's looking really good. There are obviously some things that we can do with this to make these better. Some things like, um, you know, we can add labels and, and excuse me. Um, and if we do add labels really quick, why, why not? We'll add a locate another location. Let's do label. Let's see what that looks like. So now we have the label on here. Looks, you know, perfectly fine. Um, we can also do, let's see. Let's see what else we want. Um, do we want to add the path? Because we could. Let's see what the path looks like. Oh, that looks terrible. Let me see if the, the order changes anything um no it just accidentally ate it whoops um let's see what else we can get in here um do, do, do. so dimension no i don't I, i'm just messing around real quick to see if i can um 
find anything interesting. Um, but the colors are auto-generated. You can always change the colors. Um, just remove this one. It didn't really add anything to it. So we have this and it looks pretty good. Now, something that we can do that's extremely easy is to add some pr um, predictive analysis or forecasting. Like where are these numbers gonna go in the future? So all you have to do is go up to analysis, go down to forecast and just say show forecast. And that's about as easy as it could possibly be. Um, at least, you know, it, I mean, it could be easier. That's about as easy as it's going to get. Um, now, I want to know, I want some additional information on here, uh, just for me, myself, and I. So I'm going to do this percent population, um, and let's do labels for these as well. Why, why is it saying 279? Oh, because that's the sum. Uh, let's go over here, go to average. Okay, so now it's showing... Um, now it's showing our numbers. Okay, so it, it went back to March and then it's forecasting ahead. Now, if I shrink this a little bit to like June when it starts like ramping up, the forecasting will go away. Um, I, I can do that. I could do, I can do an exact, oops, let me not do that. I can do like a custom range. Um, let me see if I can, what am I doing? What on earth am I doing? Ba -ba -bum. Is it format? Let's take a look in here. Uh, I genuinely don't know where I'm looking right now. I'm trying to um, shrink this date to like June. And somebody out there who is watching is like, Alex, come on in. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I really do get it. Um, I don't remember where to go to do that. Um, but that's okay. Just imagine shrinking it to like June and the forecasting go away, going away because it needs, I believe, 12 months of data to be able to predict into the future. Um, and these look numbers look pretty accurate. It's it's predicting till March to the end of the year. Um, and if I know the US, yeah, that's uh probably pretty accurate. So by the end of this year, it's projecting about 20%. <clears throat> it's very possible. Um, and who knows? Who knows? We're starting to level off, right? Right? You see this curve it's starting to go down? Yeah. I'm go straight back up. So um, this right here, I mean, it's pretty good, right? We're doing all right. So let's rename this. Let's call this percent population infected. Now, <clears throat> This is just what I wanted to do. You don't have to do this. You can do, um, you know, whatever you want. If you want to make it look different, make it look unique, I recommend you just mess around with here. Again, we can mess with the tick marks as much as we want. Um, I don't want to call month of date. That seems odd to me. I'm just going to type, I'm just going to do month. I don't know. Just seems better. So... Now we have our last visualization. And now if we go down here, that's another sheet. That's a new dashboard, which is new. So we have our new dashboard right here. Uh, let's change the size. Just do automatic, makes it the largest. Um, and let's start, <clears throat> let's start adding things. I'm just gonna start adding them because, well, I can. Um, and let's do let's add this map, and let's add this um, just to as a start. That's what we have, <clears throat> and it's already looking pretty good. Um, I want this to come down next to this visualization or be attached to it. So I'm gonna drag it right here. Okay, this one I'm gonna drag. Let me see if it um, will stay stay in here. Oh, that looks terrible. I'm just gonna keep it there. I'm going to drag, try to drag this. Let me see. How can I get this to stay up top? Oh, here. Let me, um, let me try to extend this one. That's not, that's not really that helpful, to be honest. <clears throat> okay. Getting closer. 
And let's scooch this out just a bit. Maybe even to here. Oh, that didn't work. That's not working. Jeez, I am butchering this. Um, formatting in these things, I, I am not a fan of. Um, uh, but, you know, what can you do? Whoops. Let me go over here to drag. Um, and we'll do like kind of like that picture. Covers a lot of countries. Um, okay. This is very close. I mean, we could get closer. But I mean, this is about it. Uh, and let me stop right here and just say, if you've made it here, you're doing a really good job. Um, I, I don't know if I went too fast or too slow or what I did. But, uh, you know, we got the data into Tableau. We looked at our data. We, um, we then created each of the four visualizations and then put it into a uh, dashboard. And as is right here, we're pretty close, right? There's some things that need to be changed. Um, so we'll, like we need some, some new headers and stuff like that. But let's take a look. And this one needs to be, um, what are we gonna call this one? So this is the total deaths per continent. Just keep it simple. Keep it simple. So, I mean, for as quickly as we got, as we did this, is a fairly good beginner dashboard. There's so, so much that you can do with this. There's so much that you can do with this. Um, and if I had three hours, four hours, five hours, uh, you know, we could do that. But honestly, that, that would just be insane. Um, in all, to be completely realistic, this did not take me an hour and a half to make initially, right? I had to mess with things. I had to, um, I had to readjust things. I had to go back and look at my queries. In all actuality, this took me a week, um, or probably the more advanced one, took me a week. And, and so I don't want you to get this picture in your head like this is just only takes an hour and a half. Like legitimately, this could be weeks of work. Um, to look at the look at the data, make sure that the data is clean, to make sure that your visualizations do what you want. Um, you may want um, to have some type of theme, some color theme uh, along the way. You know, there is so much that can go into visualizations that we have not even discussed that I will talk about in the series um, a little quite a bit more. There's so much that could go into this. Um, and so I don't want you to get the impression that I was able to do this in a short amount of time. I promise you it took me quite a while. Um, legitimately a week on and off working on it, um, like an hour or two a night. Because I just, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I'm like, oh, I messed this data up. Oh, I forgot there were nulls in there. Things that I polished up and got and told you beforehand because I made those mistakes when I was going through it. So Wanted to set that precedent now so you didn't think that I was some genius because I don't want anybody to think that is not uh, the case. So let's keep going. We have now, let's say, let's just call this completed. Of course, there's more that we can do to make it better. Um, this could be a little larger. Um, and honestly, I should make that a little bit larger. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't do that. Make this a little bit larger. And, and so now we're done. Now we want, let's say, Say, okay, uh, you know, I finished my dashboard. I want to share this to LinkedIn. I want to share this as a portfolio project in uh, on my resume. How do I do that? So, so simple. We're going to go to file. We're going to do save to public or Tableau public as. It's going to basically say, what is it? And I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say COVID dashboard. Uh, let's say tutorial. You don't write that. That's not how you spell it, tutorial. Tutorial. I am, uh, as you can tell, I talk to myself a lot when I'm spelling. It helps me sound things out. So we're going to save this and watch the magic. It's amazing. It's saving it. It's saving it. And boom, it opens it up. And there is your dashboard. Now, you get your own um, URL that you can literally copy. And you can send to somebody and say, hey, look, I made this. And they can click on that link and they can go to it. So, um, again, oh, what is this? 
I don't know why it's doing that. <clears throat> Again, this is not perfect by any means, but I hope it showed you some of the concepts, some of the ideas that I had behind the data itself. Um, I didn't want this to be three hours, which it was before, and so I condensed it. Maybe this is now like 45 minutes, which I would be super happy about, to be honest. I, the shorter the better, um, because I want people to be able to actually get through it and learn something and see how you can easily make a dashboard and be able to share it and it make a huge impact on your potential career. It really can make a difference. And so I highly encourage you to make many of these, right? On my on my Alex Analyst, he's not gonna get a job with one dashboard. Maybe, maybe he is. Somebody really likes his current dashboard, but do two, three, four, five. Um, this is your Tableau portfolio, right? Your portfolio for SQL, your portfolio for Python, those are going to be in GitHub and those you'll need multiple of those as well. So don't just stop here with one, okay? Let this be um, a starting place and then you grow from here. This should not, I don't think this should be your final pro product. It's, it's not bad, but you can go further from there and, and improve on what we've worked on today and make it awesome. So that is all I got. Uh, you know, I, I hope this has been helpful. I, you know, I, Again, I hope I didn't disappoint anybody by not doing like the three hour one because there's that one guy out there like, oh man, I wanted to do the three hour tutorial. Well, you're the only one. I didn't, I wouldn't have wanted to do my own three hour tutorial. So I hope that the people out there who are watching this, who got this far, were able to successfully complete it um, to get the kind of visual, visualization they were hoping for. Uh, I really appreciate you watching this. I hope, again, I hope it was helpful. Uh, if you liked it, be sure to like and subscribe because I have a lot more content coming out um, with the portfolio series as well as Tableau and Python tutorials coming up. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.